So when it's not normal, we want to recognize as not normal. I will tell you that lots of cardiac events, lots of strokes, lots of vascular events, lots of breathing difficulty problems, lots of chemical imbalances in the brain do this. This is very vulnerable to skill loss and it could be temporary, it could be permanent. We want to pick up on changes in this area because this is vital. The ability to manipulate words is essential and vital in how we generally interact with each other. Because what am I expecting to do with my cueing? You'll get it and you'll be able to process it. We've got to recognize when we have issues here, we better figure this out really quick. Our problem is we don't. We keep wanting what we can't have here. And we keep thinking they're getting more than they're getting because we're doing this and they're getting that. And they have this whole set of skills, put this hand up, which is strong, powerful, and retained on the right. So let me tell you what's over there. These are all rhythm-related skills with one exception. It's special. So you have language and you have rhythm. So let me help you hold on to it. We'll look at it in a second so you see it. Okay, here we go. Put your hands up. The heels of your hands are going to hit your temporal lobes to help you remember this. And you're going to go left, right, like you're marching. Left, right, do it again. Left, right, good. Language on the left. Rhythm on the right. Now, I want you to look at me while you do it first. Okay, you ready? Formal and straight up. Language on the left. Rhythm on the right. Now, you need to kick that hit. You need to get a little rhythm action going there. Because I want you to have a full body memory cue of what they keep and what they lose. And I want you to hang on to it. Now, this is simplified, but it's the basics of what they keep. And it's the basics of where things are. It's complicated, but I don't want to make it too hard for you. So what do we have over here? Language on the left, rhythm on the right. Now you lose on the left, retain on the right. You lose on the left, retain on the right. So here are your four rhythm skills you keep, plus one. This one's special. Number one, automatic social chit chat. They keep the automatic social chit chat because it's actually, hey, sweetheart, how are you doing? You been okay? Good. How's the family? Good to see you. Oh, you look great. You take care, okay? See you later. Chit chat. Automatic chit chat. And so it makes them seem in a social situation like everything's fine. And so everybody says to you, I don't know what you're worried about. She's, she sounds great. Spend a day. Spend a day at my house. <laughs> because once we get past this, do this, that's surface chit chat. The thing that's missing is the depth. I can't do the depth. I can do the chit chat. It's still there. It will be there for a long time. Even late in the disease. Hey, you got a nice penis? Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Everybody here have a good penis. Oh, I like that too. That's nice. Oh, good. <laughs> now I shock everybody because it's like, what did she say? Remember I said there was a special skill over here? I just showed it to you. What it is, stick your thumb out. The special skill are forbidden words. Your vocabulary that you're not allowed to use in public is stored over on the right hand side. Now there are four categories, swear words, sex talk. Remember the first time as a little kid you said, Mommy, what's a penis? And she said, shh, sweetheart, that's fine, but let's not say that at the grocery store so loud. Well, I don't have a penis. Bobby has a penis. <laughs> Tipa, here's the deal. <laughs> shh, I'll tell you in the car. Why can't we talk about it here? Because there's rules about penises and we talk about them in private. <laughs> Why? 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 Look, it's a special word. Let me put it over here. So we have swear words. We have sex talk. Ooh, here's a bad one. Racial slur. Ugly words for other groups, other, or other categories of people that we don't trust, like, want to be around. Racial. Oh, yeah. And the bad news about race? It's visual. Oops. Bad news bears. Because I lost all my good words. And what I have less are the nasties. And then the last one, ugly words. Shut up, you're an idiot, stupid, fatso, retarded, preserved. 
Those are preserved in almost all brains who have dementia. And the reason we think they are is because how they get used routinely in human beings. They are used for a particular reason. I'll show you in a second. So we have normal chit chat. Second skill that I have, this is really important, do this. Rhythm, I've got rhythm. I can give it and I can get it. I still get the rhythm of speech and I can give the rhythm of speech even when I have no content. Now, what's gonna happen? And then we're gonna get And we're gonna holler down the head. Hey, daddy. Hey, you gonna get it? Yeah, daddy, that pen is gonna, you gotta get in. And you gotta, oh, look at the head. That's not like it. Now, that's not like it. Now, yellow gun. You gonna get in? You get it? Down, down, down. You put it in the head. Yeah, pet, you got my boobies. Now, imagine I'm at church. <laughs> and I'm a judge's wife. <laughs> Our society is so not tuned into this that we do this. As soon as we hear that kind of thing, you know better than that. And what I'm going to tell you is we need to educate everybody. You know what? It's not about knowing better than that. It's what I have left. It's a skill. Unfortunately, it's not just rhythm. <laughs> it's the forbidden words, too. And I don't have, boy, you look nice in that outfit. It's very nice. I actually did some of that. But then I wanted to say more. And when I went to say more, you have nice boobs. <laughs> it might have been you looked really nice in that outfit, but that's gone. I couldn't put all that out there. Nice outfit, uh, nice boobs. Got that one. Check. <laughs> and what I don't realize is where I shouldn't, where I shouldn't use these words anymore. Because that part's gone, but I know the words. Now, if you get me upset... <laughs> get ready. So I give rhythm, but I also get rhythm. Not necessarily content, because that is vocabulary, comprehension of speech, and speech production. Early in this, people will miss out of four words. How before you got, do you think? Early in this, people will miss out of four words. How before you got, do you think? Er, look, early in this, people will miss out of four words. How before you got, do you think? Do you speak English? <laughs> early in this disease, people will miss one out of four words. How long before you got OSP, do you think? Early in this, people will miss out of four words. How before you got, do you think? All I did was skip every fourth word, and it's amazing how quickly you lose the train. And so what they do is called speaking off on a tangent. They have tangential speech because they're trying to follow along, but they get lost pretty easily, even early on, because you're missing, on average, put up four fingers, one out of four. And if one out, the one out of four you're missing is a content word, like a noun, and you miscomprehended the noun, you are way off base. And so then the person looks at you like, what are you talking about? It's because we're not actually connecting up. We're missing each other because I think I'm getting it. I don't know what I don't know. And it's not like I'm doing this on purpose. I just miss this, but I keep this rhythm thing. So my brain says you're getting it. So let me give you another example of keeping rhythm. This is early in certain dementias, and it's called primary progressive aphasia, a particular type of dementia. And this particular type of dementia, a fluent variation, not non-fluent. I'll show you non-fluent in a minute. You'll pick up on it. But, but listen, do you know that the articulation of that phenomena, that is the one that many people find to be particularly articulated. And that's the one I wanted to point out. When you find that articulation occurring, that is the one that you will want to precipitate. And the precipitation will result in the phenomenological event that you are looking to actually have the thing be the one that you want to participate. I agree. Well, I absolutely find that to be fascinating. Do you not find that articulation to be something that we should participate in? Yes. <laughs> now, his eyes just crossed and his brain went, oh, shit, I hope I did not sign up for something I don't want to do. 
Now, I want to point out, when I did that, how hard you found your brains working. Your brains were keep the, you kept going. Okay, wait a minute. No, oh, there was a word. Oh, I recognize that one, but they don't seem to go together. And your brain is struggling because you hear all these words, and, and to your mind, it's like, you can feel your faces go, I have no idea what she's talking about. But it feels like it should make sense because I had great rhythm. And so you found yourself looking at me very closely. All of you are watching me really closely thinking, okay, I'll be able to figure this out. She'll get to a point where it all makes sense. <laughs> it's sort of like going to the doctor's office when he says, well, now what we're going to do is we're going to have to adjust your range of motion because what you've had, you have a muscle impingement. And the muscle impingement is going to result in some nerve pain. And we want to be careful that we don't really cause that articulated joint to not, you're like, so what is it I'm supposed to do? <laughs> And so you're looking for a translation. The challenge here is I've got this beautiful rhythm. I have absolutely no content. And about nine out of 10 times, I won't know that I'm not making sense. I think that I'm still sharing content of value. And when you act like I'm not making sense and you give me cues back that say, I don't understand what you're, I get flustered because I don't understand how could you not get this? I mean, you. I'm being as clear as I know how, and I mean, I'm giving you great content. You've got to watch really carefully. I want you to look at your person. I want one person to say, now you know the phenomenological event that we're looking at. That's the one that's going to articulate everything. And I want the other person to go, what are you talking about? And I want you to really look puzzled, and I want you to go, I want you to give a good, strong visual cue. I have, you are making no sense whatsoever. Try using words I can understand. I want you to actually stand in front, get in front of a person and do that kind of reaction. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you, you're going to see a variety of reactions on my part. If I think you're really stupid because I can't figure out, I didn't know that I was making mistakes. I didn't have awareness. What's the most likely reaction? I get angry with you. How stupid are you? What are you, an idiot? And now this thing kicks in. And I start being really mean to you. On the other hand, let's say I have awareness and I'm anxious and nervous and I'm starting to notice. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. <laughs> and what I do is quit talking. So many of these folks will choose to go mute because they do recognize it and I know I'm losing my skill. Now here's where I'm going to want to be with my partner from now on. I don't want to get separated from my spokesperson because if I don't have a person who can speak for me, I'm mute. And so now I get panicky anytime this primary is out of my sight. I want them to be right where I can see them because they speak for me. And if I don't know where they are, no. And you say, I'm just going to run to the store. No, please don't do that. Because I, and this is where I'll latch on to folks, because understand speech is so critical in our environment and our world that if I don't have a way to connect, I literally become so panicked I can't function and I will have panic attacks if you try to step away from me. Because I'm so scared that no, no, I, won't be, I won't know how to get, and I know that I can't. So this is that moment of real distress and it really is horrible. I mean, it's beyond horrible when my whole life, I've been a speaker, a talker, a lawyer, a teacher, a secretary. I've used words to connect, to communicate, and now I have none, and I know it. And I, I know that when I try, I don't make any sense. And so many people, they have rhythm, but they don't have content. And what we do is see what they can't do instead of go to the side where they have strength and work from the side that's retained. And we make them feel incompetent. And because they feel incompetent, they stop trying. And that third group, ooh, the strong folks. Damn bunch of damn idiots. A whole bunch of damn stupid ass people. All of you full of shit, every single one of you. Now, what's my reputation like? Every time you approach me, I'm mean, I seem to, I mean, and what I, what I do is I have awareness and I'm so scared. I do not want to put myself out there. So I'm busy. I write words down. I, I write notes of what I'm going to say. And then I, 
then I get there and you try to, con and I, I fall apart and I go to those ugly words because I'm so scared that I'm going to get caught. And so I often say things, or I just talk on. Those are the people who don't have a clue until you give them a hug. Does this make sense? Okay. So, rhythm of speech. But I get rhythm of speech, too. This is what we miss. I get the rhythm of speech. So, wait a minute. Are you ready to hang Yeah? Yeah? Now, you ready to hang out? Hold on, hi. Huh? You going to let me do that? Okay, okay, hand out. Come on, hand out. Because what we're going to do, we're going to do it. And when we're done, I'm going to come out, okay? You go with that? Okay, turn around a little bit. Okay, what we're going to do? Okay, now you're on your I'm going to get a tower, right? Yeah? Yeah? Now you're not going to hang out here. Yeah, hang out here. No, I didn't think I'm like, you want to do it totally different, right? <laughs> all right, yeah. Why are you going to hang out on your hand? You go with that? Okay. All right, you ready? Okay. All right. One, two, three. Okay, turn your hand on. <laughs> now, let me ask you something. You thought I was the person with dementia, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh uh. I'm your caregiver, and you have moderately severe dementia. What did you get? All the rhythm of my speech. You could tell exactly when I was asking you a question by the rhythm. And you knew you were supposed to answer. And then I gave you visual cues about the answer I wanted to hear. I nodded when I wanted to. I gave you a really good visual. These are all automatics, by the way. And so I got you to say what I wanted you to say. But what I didn't realize is you never comprehended anything I said. Now, tell me your first name. Judd. Judd. Okay, so Judd, you stay here just a second. What I want to point out is that all I did, just so you'll know, I'm going to give you the cue, and from now on you'll be able to understand me better. All I did was lay my tongue down so I didn't articulate nearly as clearly. So I robbed you of consonants and left the vowels for you. Okay? Hey, you ready to hang on how? I'm going to give you a shower. Hang on, hold on. I'm going to give you a shower, okay? I'm going to give you a shower, okay? I'm going to hang on your hold on. Okay? How are you, all right? All right. Now, you're not going to hang me out here. Yeah, hey, are you? <laughs> See how you're starting to understand my language now? Because once I tell you what's missing, your brains are incredible. They are so good at comprehension. They went and they found the missing pieces, and they're putting the puzzle back together again because you're intact. And now you're curious. Now, that's why I like about you. What did I eat? You're like, different than the other one. That's why I like about you. Because one day is totally different than the other one. That's what I like about you, because one day is totally different than the other one. Okay? All right. How are you? How are you? Are you know, you're right with that? Yeah. I'm going to take my hands off first, okay? Yeah, okay, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> now, in this scenario, let me be very clear as far as comprehension went. What was the first sensation that was really clear to him what I was going to do? When I touched him. And to his mind, this was just a social interaction. He had no idea this was going beyond social stuff. He thought I was chit-chatting with him, having a lovely time. He didn't comprehend, but it seemed to him that we were being very friendly. I was being very nice. I was going, ready, yes, and he says, yes, and then. <laughs> so with your person straight across from you, turn and face them. I want you to make sure you're facing them so that we get a sense of how horrible this is, really. Okay, okay we're going to stay right here. Okay, now turn and face. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at them and smile, and then look down at their shirt and realize they have a great big wad of oatmeal right there. Uh-oh. It's a really nasty wad. I mean, it's huge. And what I want you to do is the classic caregiver. Okay? I'm going to get it. Okay? Now I want you to grin and smile at them. Okay, now here's the new piece. All right, here's the new piece I'm going to give you. Remember I said vision changes? What they lose is the edge, peripheral awareness, and their visual field gets smaller and smaller and smaller because they keep curiosity, which is your center field, and they lose the edge, which is safety awareness. So their visual field gets smaller and smaller. So by this point in the disease, at best, do this, put on binoculars. This is how much of the world they can pay attention to at a time. 
And when you're right in front of them like that, what part of you have you asked them to pay attention to? Your face. And so they're watching your face. So person with dementia, put on your binoculars. Person who's helping, grin and smile and say, okay. And now make sure you've nodded and shake them up and now reach out to their shirt. What do you realize for the very first time? They can't see you coming. They have no idea you're about to make contact with your shirt because they think you're being social. And with the vision loss and the change in comprehension, this touch came out of nowhere. They were totally not expecting it. Try this. We're going to really work on these skills this afternoon, but I want you to try this. You put that on. Okay. Yes. Hey. Oh. You do it. You got it? Mm hmm. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Try that with your partner and see how that feels. <laughs> no? Nope. Here. It's important, all of you I'm watching, point to yourself first, look down at your own point, and then look at theirs and point. Don't reach out and put your hand on it right away. You cue where they can see. And then you do the motion, and then you point to theirs. It's a two-step. Thanks, Jim. All right. So we have two language skills left to go over here before we take our break, and it's almost lunchtime, so I better hurry up. There's lots more to learn. We're going to learn a lot more with skills this afternoon, but I want to wrap this up. Over here, what's over here that's starting to be gone? Bo what is it? Vocabulary, comprehension, speech production. Losing the skill. What are we keeping? The strength over here. Automatic social chit-chat, the rhythm of speech. This is the gift. This is the blessing. This is the thing you want to hook into because it's a retained skill for about 98% of humans who develop any form of dementia. Music, poetry, prayer, rhythm. Music, poetry, and prayer. They will be able to sing when they cannot speak. They will be able to sing. They will be able to uh, do prayer if it's old familiar prayer. So in this group, I'm betting I have a majority of folks. Our Father. Lord, yep. How about this one? The Lord is my how do you know it wasn't going to be the Lord is my God, the Lord is my... Why was it the Lord is my shepherd? Because it's the 20... Yep. It's what we do when we're in times of emotional need, and it's strongly linked in. This thing, this rhythm, this music, this poetry, this prayer, is hooked into the emotional center. It's our strength. This is the gift that we have and that they have, and this is the way we can connect with one another if we learn to use that gift. Many of you by now have started to notice that when I speak, I speak with a lot of rhythm. I use rhythm and pauses in my speech combined with incredible amounts of visual cueing to emphasize the message so that I have a chance at getting through. Yeah. <laughs> Now, it doesn't mean you get louder. It means you get richer and smoother and fuller and deeper with your cueing. But this is the gift. The problem is we forget it's a gift, and we're all worried about what they lose, not what they keep. And here's the really cool part. When you do this, often it lights this up because there is wiring from side to side. And when I use what they can do, the wiring lights up and suddenly for a short period of time, many people can speak more clearly, can understand what you're saying to them. And this is the way you get there. You use what they still have. And the last little one on the end, another strength, is I move with rhythm. So I can dance better than I can walk. I'm walking, barely moving with a walker. You put on, I've got rhythm. And all of a sudden, I'm like, doo, 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 and you're like, seriously? 
I can also do this one. Watch what happens in here. Why didn't you repeat me? Because that's not what happens. You have to finish off the rhythm. Did you have to finish it off? So what if I go one, two, three. Yeah, and I can help you stand up better. I can help you sit down better. Because what I'm doing is giving you that rhythm anticipatory, what's the next thing? Now, you have to be prepared for it. I didn't get it. And you might have to do it a couple times, and you may have to break it down a little bit more. But learning how to use what I've got. Remember, I got this one, too. What makes me do this one is when you get my limbic system all stirred up. That's the thing you've got to understand. You make me angry. You scare me. You do anything that startles me. Because we get these words, and the first, you learn them somewhere. When you're two to seven years old, you're somewhere and you hear a word. Everybody in this room, somewhere between two and seven, you learned your first one. You came home and you said, hey, mom. <laughs> shit. And your mom went, what? <laughs> you went, shit. And mom said, where did you hear that? Who told you that, Johnny? Well, we don't use words like that. I never want to hear it. Go wash your mouth. That was so But I'm going to tell you something. If I ever hear you use that word again, you are going to be in so much trouble, young lady. Do you understand me? Yeah. I'm not going to be like that. Now, you're looking real sad. Your brain is going, oh, shit, look, I found a word, special word. This is kind of cool. This was a special word. Boy, did that get a reaction? But what it said is, better not leave this in regular vocabulary. Never want to do this in front of mom again. This was a problem. But I don't want to lose the word. It was a special word. <laughs> where can I put it? Where can I hook it? Where can I store it? Where I can have it if I want it, need it at some point? I know. I'll put it in the rhythm section. So you start your storage unit, and you have swear words, sex words, racial slur, ugly words, all stored over there. Now, what they found out, they did research on this. This is important. You're in a parking lot all by yourself. No one's around. You accidentally slam your fingers in a car door. Nine, nine out of ten of you will do the following. You ready? Slam. Shit. You do the little shit dance. There's a dance. There's a little dance, and there's the flinging of the hand that goes with it. And you say the word shit, and you say it with emphasis, shit. Now, what happens when you do that quickly in your brain? Your brain drops cortisol level and releases endorphins. <sighs> Stress relief, pain reduction. Yeah. That's where they come in handy. You've got to save them for special occasions so they have that gift, that power. So here's my anticipation with the next generation. Here's what they're going to say. Please, please, thank you, thank you so much. Because it's clear that F you is going to sort of not be there anymore. And neither is any of that other stuff because it's so prevalent everywhere else that they aren't going to use it specially. But now, here's the tricky part. With every grown person, when they did the same thing, and they put you in the same situation, and you slammed your finger in the car doors, and there was a three-year-old standing next to your car. Oh. Here's what would happen with nine out of ten of you. One of you didn't give a shit. But the rest, <laughs> slam. Oh. oh, darn. Oh, shoot. Oh, man, that hurts. <laughs> Hello, little boy. Oh. <laughs> what don't you get? No stress reduction, no pain relief. But your frontal lobe kicked in, and you weren't the one that taught that little kid that word. That was really important to you to hold those suckers back. So what does that mean? Well, when you get dementia, things change. <laughs> get ready. Those kids are going to learn those words anyway. Let's not separate them from our elders. And let's not make this a disease of isolation simply because of what I have left. What you want to do is learn to use what we do have that has value. And that's what we're going to do this afternoon. What I wanted to do this morning is separate out myth from reality about what is this thing called dementia? And why are we so scared of it? Well, because it looks sort of like normal aging, but it's not. And then when we do see it, sometimes we don't recognize it for what it is. And what we keep recognizing is what they're losing, but we miss some of that. And we for sure miss what they still have. So this afternoon is going to be all about building your skill set when we look more deeply into the brain and understand everything that's gone and everything that's kept. Okay?